Hello students, today I will be talking to you on an important topic, first aid and emergency care. Introduction In India, several national health programs have been directed at promoting healthy lifestyles of the general people to prevent illness and disease. First aid education should be a central part of these health programs, teaching skills that can prevent an illness or accident inflicting serious injury or resulting in a fatality. If we are serious about preventing unnecessary injury and death, then we need to ensure that people have basic first aid knowledge. By starting to teach first aid in all sectors, we can help people prevent serious injury and death in their communities today. Foresight to the wounded and the sick is what light is to the one confronted with darkness. Mahatma Gandhi, whom we all fondly refer to as father of the nation, led a dedicated band of ambulance corps volunteers in 1906 at the time of Zulu rebellion and earlier in 1899 at the time of Boer War in South Africa. It will be worth mentioning that Gandhiji himself carried the wounded General Buller to the base hospital. Definition of Force Aid Force Aid is the first assistance or treatment given to a casualty for an injury or a sudden illness before the arrival of an ambulance or qualified medical expert. It is the assistance provided by a first aider for preserving life and health, alleviating suffering, providing psychological support, and preventing long-term disability before the arrival of or handover to the emergency care or health services. The scopes of first aid. There are three scopes of first aid, which are number one, to preserve life. A first aider can preserve the life of a casualty by way of taking up the following three vital actions. Number one, maintain an open airway by positioning the casualty correctly. Number two, Begin resuscitation if the casualty is not breathing and heart is not beating and continue treatment until skilled medical aid is available. Number three, control bleeding. The second scope of farsight is to prevent the condition worsening. Number one, Dressed wounds provide comfortable support for any large wounds and fractures. Number two, place the casualty in a comfortable position consistent with the requirements or treatment. The third scope of our side is to promote recovery. This can be achieved by relieving the casualty of anxiety and encourage confidence. And secondly, relieve the casualty of pain and discomfort. Thirdly, handle the casualty gently. And fourth, protect the casualty from cold, heat, etc. Now, calling for help. According to the severity of the casualty, first aider may have to seek emergency help. While making the call, state clearly your name and provide the following details. First, your telephone number. Next, the exact location of the incident, the road or the street sign, landmarks in the area, and also the type and the gravity of the incident. The number, gender, 
age of the different casualties and the details of any hazards such as gas, toxic substances, power line damage or adverse weather conditions like rain, fog, wind, etc. When the emergency services arrive, first either must share the details of the casualty and incident or the illness with the emergency care providers and follow their proposals or instructions made by them. Life-threatening priorities. The important organ of the human body, the brain, coordinates the different activities of the different parts of the body. For this, the brain needs oxygen and which is supplied through the process of respiration or breathing. The brain cannot function without oxygen for more than three minutes. Hence, the priority is to maintain an open airway in any casualty, followed by breathing and circulation or control of severe bleeding so that oxygen is supplied to the brain and the other vital organs all the time. Now, it is easier to remember these priorities as A, B, C. So, when dealing with an unconscious casualty, you should open and maintain their airway as your first priority. If the casualty is breathing, the simple procedure of placing the casualty into the recovery position should ensure that airway would remain clear of obstructions. Uh, if the casualty has stopped breathing, then you can assist them by performing CPR, that is cardiopulmonary resuscitation, which is a combination of chest compression and the rescue breaths. You breathe out enough oxygen to potentially keep the casualty alive until the emergency services arrive. The oxygen you breathe into the casualty will need then to be pumped around the body using chest compressions. It is important to remember that in any life-threatening situation, the emergency services should be called as soon as breathing or absence of breathing has been identified. Now let's talk about sports injuries. Playing sport and doing regular exercise is good for your health. But it can sometimes result in injuries. Sports injuries can also be caused by an accident or not warming up properly before exercising and using inadequate equipment or poor technique. So traumatic injuries account for most injuries in contact sports and collisions with the ground objects and the other players are common. Unexpected dynamic forces on limbs and joints can cause injury. Injuries which will result to wounds and bleeding. If the wound is minor, the aim of force either is to prevent infection. However, severe wounds may be very daunting to deal with but the aim is to prevent further blood loss and minimize the shock that could result from bleeding. The aim of first aid. The number one is complication must be prevented or minimized. Number two, the location and extent of a wound must be carefully assessed. The treatment of minor external wounds consists of Number one, wash your hands and dry your own hands. Then, number two, cover any cuts on your own hands or you put on disposable gloves. Then, number three, clean the cut if dirty on the running water of the casualty. And four, cover the cut completely with a sterile dressing or a plaster. 
And let's talk on treatment of external bleeding wounds. Have the injured person lie down. This position reduces the risk of fainting by increasing blood flow to the brain. If possible, elevate the site of bleeding. Secondly, while wearing gloves, remove any obvious dart or debris from the wound. Number three, apply pressure directly on the wound using a sterile bandage or a clean cloth or even a piece of clothing. If nothing else is available, use your own hand. After that, cover the wound with a gauze or a bandage. Having done this, we will not forget to check frequently if the fingers or the toes remain warm. And a treat for shock if there is any. And lastly, we will dial for an ambulance and refer to a health center. Now let us talk about the treatment of internal bleeding wounds. When bleeding occurs inside the body, the blood will sometimes leak from inside the body through the natural openings in our body, such as the nose, the ear, the stool, the urine, the vomit, or through the blood canal. Other times, the blood stays inside the body causing pain and shock. Musculoskeletal problems. The skeleton is hard framework around which the body is constructed and supports the muscles, the blood vessels, and nerves, and protects organs such as the brain, the heart, and it is also joined in many places and the muscles attached to the bones enable them to move. Most of these movements are controlled at will and coordinated by impulses sent from the brain via the nerves to every muscle and the joint in the body. Number A, the fractures. A fracture is a partial or complete bend or a crack or a breakage of a bone caused by a direct or indirect force to the bone. When a direct force is applied, the bone breaks at the point of application of the force. Recognition fissures feels pain when try to move the injured part. Feel pain when we gently press the injured part. He will not be able to move the injured part at all. And we will see swelling or a change in the shape of the body where there is severe pain. We may also see the shortening or bending or twisting of a limb and bruising at the site of fracture. A wound with bone ends protruding which we'll refer to as open fracture. Now, aim of giving first aid is to prevent movement at the injury site and to arrange removal to hospital with comfortable support. Also to prevent blood loss, movement and infection at the site of injury. Number B is dislocations. A dislocation is the displacement of one bone or more bones at the joint. This can be caused by a strong force displacing the bone into an abnormal position or by violent muscle contraction. Recognition fissures. Severe pain at or near the joint and the casualty cannot move the joint and we also see there is a deformity, shortening, bending of the joint, an unnatural position. There will also be swelling and bruising around the affected joint. 
the aim of foresight in such situations are to prevent movement at the injury site second is to arrange removal to hospital with comfortable support now the third musculoskeletal problem that we will discuss is sprains and the strains the softer structures around the bones and the joints which are called ligaments muscles and tendons can be injured in several ways when the muscles and the tendons are torn or ruptured it is a strain and is invariably accompanied by bleeding into the surrounding tissues leading to pain swelling and bruising whereas sprain is the injury to the ligaments holding the joints whether it is strain or sprain recognition features are almost the same they are pain and tenderness difficulty in moving the injured part swelling and bruising deformity at the side of the injury in such situation the aim of force aid is to reduce the pain and to obtain medical help if necessary so the force aid for sprains and strains the sprains and strains could be treated initially by the rice procedure there is r i c e procedure where r stands for resting the injured part now i is the ice pack or cold padding of the injured part and c is a comfortable support to be provided while e is to alleviate the injured part now let me talk to you about emergency care service it is an organization and groups with a system of or a network of resources and personnel having a specific responsibility to prepare for and respond to emergency situations its members are qualified to intervene directly at an incident or to take over the management of a casualty who has been initially assisted by a bystander and or a first aider on the scene this responsibility is legally established by the local authorities and accepted as well as recognized by the community and casualties assistance provided by an emergency care service may be in the form of number 1 training or education service in the prevention of preparation for response to emergency situations number 2 direct attendance at all scenes of emergency situation for risk control rescue and or emergency care provision number 3 verbal or written advice and the guidance to a casualty a bystander or a first aider at the scene number 4 provision of transport for the casualty lastly number 5 is care in a healthcare center able to receive a casualty now the next topic that i will discuss with you is about incident management incidents accidents or emergencies may happen anywhere and any time be it at home or the road community educational areas sports arena religious or workplaces the site of any such situation may be with many potential dangers or risks for the first aiders for the casualties as well as for the bystanders hence before commencing any first aid intervention it is imperative to protect yourself from possible dangers make the area safe and have a primary assessment of the situation according to the situation call for help provide suitable treatment and if necessary 
arrange for early removal of the casualty to the appropriate health facility. Recognition of the existence of an emergency. One will realize that an emergency has occurred only if they are aware of unusual sounds, noises, sights, smells, and behaviors. Now, conclusion. In many health emergencies, interventions in the first few minutes before the emergency services arrive can make a crucial difference to the outcome for the casualty. Teaching people for such skills is core to addressing the unacceptable situation where many people die each year when immediate foresight could have, set, could have given them a chance to live. The ready availability of trained first aiders can be the difference between a life loss and a life save. Thank you.